We are almost there. Day 29 of the Great Glute Challenge. Listen, this one's difficult. At first, when I looked at this as a, as a trainer and a Pilates instructor, I'm like, what? Most people can't even do this. Um, so I'm going to show you several modifications for this particular exercise. It's called a plank walk-up, but there's going to be many of you who probably have zero business doing a plank walk-up. And it's because of the shift that can happen in your SI joint. So there's your sacrum. And then on each side of your sacrum, under your cheeks, there's a line where your hips, your hip bones connect to your sacrum bone, okay? And yes, it can shift in its little groove, counter mutation, mutation. Sometimes it shifts forward, sometimes it shifts back. Sometimes one side shifts and the other one doesn't. You have like this rotated SI joint, painful. So some of you need to really check yourself before you wreck yourself on this exercise because you probably have zero business doing this exercise, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. And then I'm going to show you two modifications to take just in case when I show you how it's supposed to look and I'm going to show you what to look for that is your body's way of saying, don't you dare. Um, I'll show you the two modifications to follow. It is 25 of these total. I'm sorry, 10 on each side is how it's written. So 10 plank walk-ups with the left foot leading, 10 plank walk-ups with the right foot leading. And again, most of you are probably going to end up taking the modifications because your SI joint is going to want to be slipping and sliding. Um, and that's not a great thing, okay? It's going to put you out of the game instead of keep you in the game. So, and you will be feeling that pain and won't be really feeling it in the glutes where you're supposed to be, okay? So let's just show you. So you'll start in plank, okay? And from plank position, and of course I have a whole series I could teach on just how to make your plank work and not be completely jacked up. But from plank position, you're going to walk the left foot in now notice my back, my hips are together, they're side by side. If I put a pole through my hip, my hips are side by side, and my back is aligned. If I step that foot forward and I look like this, see how you can now see both of my cheeks, and my spine looks twisted, that is a no-no. Don't do this exercise. So if you can't even get here, don't continue, wait for the modification. If you can get here with control and precision, then you walk your right foot forward. And now I'm in this nice deep squat, right? I can just take my hands away because it's all legs and booty. And then I'm going to take my left foot back because it's leading this time. And again, I want to be able to stay deep in the hips. I can run a peg through both of my hips. My back is aligned. I'm not here. If I'm here, see that twisty stuff? You can now see both of my cheeks. And don't do it. So it should look like this. Left, right, left. Right. You do 10 on one side, 10 on the other. Again, if you can't control that, if you can't breathe through it, if you can't keep your alignment, don't do it. Here's your modification. You'll be on your hands and knees, or I'm sorry, in plank position. Feet shoulder width apart. You will act like you're in the middle of a James Bond movie and you're going to slide your body back in an air duct. Notice my butt didn't go up. I'm sliding back, I'm sliding forward. I'm sliding back. I'm sliding forward, okay? This is what I call a bear squat, all right? So it's a way to help people get into those deep squats when they can't quite do it on their feet yet. So deep squat and stand. Deep squat and stand. You can do 25 total. Also helpful to do this with your heels against the wall because it helps you find your energetic center to really move into that well. Last but not least, the bear crawl is still not in your practice because your arms are like, no way. Your core, diastasis recti, isn't going to support you all there at first. Um, there's another modification, all right? And that is to stay on your knees and elbows. We do this in quarter store. And the feet are wide, knees are wide. You're going to drop your booty back and you should almost do like a down dog where I'm tilting my tailbone up and then I'm going to bring it forward and then up. And then I'm going to kiss the floor. Not really, but it's going to feel like it. kiss the floor. Notice my spine isn't changing. It's all in the hips. All right, so those are your modifications. You're going to feel really funny probably doing that last one, but trust me, your core and your pelvic floor and your booty love that last one, okay? So there's day 29. Have fun with all that.